Our ultimate goal, which is success for all, they add every student, can be what they would like to be. There are so many issues that lead into why kids drop out. It's hard to isolate in terms of any particular reason. A lot of these kids don't have great relationships with teachers or adults, more than likely because they don't trust them. Whenever they deal with adults, it's usually being punished. Where do we pass, the, pass them off to? There's nowhere to pass them off to. We have to figure out a way to work with them while they're here to keep them here. Education is one of the best investments children can make in themselves and their future. Most people agree, education opens the door to opportunity. And yet recent research suggests that more than half a million young people drop out of school each year in the United States. And the consequences are significant for youth and society as a whole. I was falling behind and I just kept going farther and farther and I realized that, hey, I can't do this. Freshman year, I started getting into drugs and that's when I started skipping school. And I was having a hard time with classes and stuff and my parents couldn't help me with my education because they didn't have one as well. As part of a federal dropout prevention grant, the Minnesota Department of Education selected school districts to participate in a pilot project to implement strategies intended to promote school completion. The National Dropout Prevention Center has identified and categorized 15 strategies effective in engaging students in school and learning. This project focused on using 10 of the strategies as a guiding framework for promoting school completion and raising rates of graduation. These are professional development, school community collaboration, family engagement, active individualized learning, safe learning environments, literacy development, mentoring tutoring, after school opportunities, service learning, and alternative schooling. All district teams were encouraged to create a cultural and contextual match between the particular dropout prevention strategy and student background. Programs needed to be tailored to the culture of the community being served. There's no way we could pick something off of someone else's tree and stick it on ours. We really had to figure out how do we make this fit who we are and who our children are. Participating districts included Duluth, Hibbing, Red Lake, Park Rapids, Brooklyn Center, St. Paul, and Richfield. These districts were selected due to dropout rates that were greater than the state average and because of varied community and student populations. Each district was required to actively involve a high school or middle school in the planning process and develop a leadership team. The leadership team included members of the school, community, families, and youth. In the beginning of this project, the expectations were laid out very clear, and they were very high. And that was done through the, the Department of Ed. And that was Cheryl's? Favorite. We had to convene an advisory group that included community people and people from the various schools and parents. So we had a range of people at the table to talk about what does our data tell us. Mm -hmm. There was no spending money until we had actually deliberated over what have we got, what's working, where are the gaps, and what can fill those gaps. When you finish this, please turn this into my box and we will move on to our next activity. We are just one entity, one agency on the Red Lake Reservation, so it was important to bring our partners to the table. We brought in Children Family Services. We brought court services to include law enforcement, uh, the juvenile courts. We brought in tribal administration. Uh, we brought in health services. Whatever successes we have been able to accomplish, one of the keys has been the ability to reach out, join forces here, and um, work toward a common goal. First, districts needed to gather relevant data and determine the extent to which various strategies were in place and the extent to which they were effective. During this stage of exploration, district teams collected a wide range of data and examined it for clues about which students were most at risk of not finishing school. This included indicators that have been identified through research and that are clearly linked to dropout or school completion, such as attendance data, number of failing grades, credit accumulation, number of suspensions, disciplinary referrals, and more. One of the things that we clearly saw was a real disconnect between middle school and high school. That's when we lose them. Whether we physically lose them or, or not, and, and of course the law says that they have to be in school until they're 16, uh, in every other way we've, we've lost them. 
Part of the data gathering process included examining their school climate. Staff used surveys or interviews to gather student perceptions of the extent to which the schools created a welcoming environment and whether the climate was conducive to learning, drug-free, and safe. All of the participating schools worked to promote positive school climates. A key to keeping youth in school is a welcoming, respectful, and safe environment where students feel they belong. Our opening ceremony, which happens on Monday, we have an opening pipe ceremony. We focus on the things that are happening that week. And then on Friday, right before the kids go home, we have a closing ceremony. So during that time, we have a pipe ceremony and a drum song so that kids all focus on a reminder that they're valued, number two, that they need to be safe, and number three, that we're all in each other's minds before they go home for the weekend. We looked at all of our discipline policies under the light of the information that we gathered um, and instituted positive behavior intervention support, a state initiative that has made big differences in the way that the students perceive themselves as respected and understood. Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports, or PBIS, is one research-based strategy that can effectively promote improvement in student behavior across the entire school. PBIS is simply a uh, culture-changing uh, initiative in how you deal with kids when it comes to behavior. So instead of being punitive, you're positive. The sense that we are putting our core values on our floors and, and making sure that, we, you know, when you walk the hallways, you understand that we're believing in respect, responsibility, caring, and honesty. And then we have our habits of mind quotes all over our walls. And just a sense of that this is a building where we have really, really high expectations. It's amazing what happens when you teach kids what kind of behavior that they need to have because they typically exhibit it. So I think it's been very effective and I think it, people have noticed that it's probably been the smoothest start of the school year we've had in several years here at Denfeld. In terms of how the school is decorated, in terms of making sure that what's represented in our building in terms of what's on these pillars, what's on the walls and classrooms reflects the diversity of our student body, the diversity of the experiences that our kids come with culturally. We use this research instrument called the Intercultural Development Inventory, which measures w one's worldview and um, where they are with navigating different The reasons for students dropping out of school are many and varied. Reasons include those factors that pull students out of school, such as pregnancy, chemical dependency, hanging out with the wrong crowd, needing to work, or not having expectations of graduating. There are also factors that essentially help to push youth out of school, including some suspension or attendance policies, bullying or unsafe school settings, and conflict or anonymity. I don't like being here. I didn't like the teachers, and I was like me against everybody. A key part of, of the success of this program was being able to hire a, a coordinator to coordinate the efforts and to chase kids down and help make them accountable. The kids wanted to be successful, but sometimes that self-discipline wasn't there. Our teachers have been able to look at our students differently. I think because of this dropout prevention before it was looking at a student academically. Now I think because of some of the data that we have, our teachers are looking at our students holistically. And that means looking at them socially and emotionally and academically to help them be successful. I used to have a student come in late frequently and I was always on his case and I gave him an alarm clock and, and I'm like, why didn't you use the alarm clock? Why are you late? Why isn't your homework done? And somebody suggested maybe looking at what's the problem behind the action. So the next day I went back and of course he was late and I got on his case and then I was like, well, what's going on? You know. What's up? How's, it, how's life at home? And, and in just opening up that conversation, I found out that his parents had been away for two months. And kind of jokingly, I said, do you have food and toilet paper? And, and he goes, yeah. And then he said, well, not so much the food part. It wasn't that he's late and he's not doing his homework. It's that he's hungry and nobody's at home with him. So we were able to work with um, social, school social workers and, and people here to give him food and help him to find places to go. 
Some of them may say I hounded them and, and tracked them down like a dog, and I did, but it was always with love and care behind it, holding them accountable by providing them the supports that they needed to be successful. I was at home one time and it just hit me. I'm like, wow. I'm screwed, I mean, I've really messed myself up. I'm really behind right now in school, you know, I'm failing almost all my classes. So I uh, came and talked to Brenda about it, and Brenda went and got all my grades and said, this is, you know, this is what you gotta get in to pass that class. And she wouldn't leave me alone, she'd talk to me like every hour. For Nolan, early identification was the most important thing because of his attendance and his falling grades. That's how the dropout prevention program was successful in Nolan's case because we identified him. It took him a couple trimesters to get into the program and to buy into it and accept the help. Research points to the transition between middle school and high school as a particularly vulnerable time when we lose many students. Each district developed or strengthened their plan for facilitating successful transition of students between middle and high school. There's been research showing um, in the last probably three to seven years, that for whatever reason, ninth graders across our country are struggling. So the Link Crew program has come into Denfeld as a way to help um, bring in the ninth graders. It's not just a let's show them what the building looks like and give them a little orientation day. The, the core of Link Crew is a mentor-mentee program. Link Crew, it's You've seen, you can see the changes throughout the year from the freshmen, how once they reach a new building, they're scared and they're timid and shy, where once you see them react with the other upper class, they don't feel like they're just a part of a crowd, like they know someone that they can go to and count on. The first day in Link Crew, we uh, started out playing a bunch of fun games and we went off into groups. It just made me feel involved and welcomed. Summer programs that focused on improving academic performance or credit recovery with small class sizes was another successful strategy for dealing with the transition from middle school to high school. The relationships that were built between student and teacher was exceptional. It was a great experience for both teacher and students. Many of our students increased their grade levels by three and sometimes four grade levels. <laughs> Part of what we are implementing in our schools is changing our schools ourselves. The idea being that if the students feel more comfortable in school, in school if they feel safer in schools, uh, if they're enjoying their schools more, they'll be here and want to stay here. It is clear that there is not one best solution to preventing students from dropping out of school. But we do know that engaging students in school and learning is the bottom line in dropout prevention. All of the districts utilized a three-tiered model to help develop a comprehensive system of student supports. Based on the data they had gathered earlier, leadership teams researched and selected prevention strategies for all three tiers. Universal strategies were provided for all students and oftentimes focused on promoting positive school climates, advisory structures, and cultures that fostered respectful relationships. Supports provided at the secondary and tertiary levels were intended for students who required more intensive supports, as indicated by the extent of their disengagement from school. I always felt that this, a school of this size needed a, a, an organization where kids were kind of running mediations. And so I went out and found a guy that was the guru in peer mediation. He came and trained Bill and I. If somebody has a problem, we call a mediator in and we probably end up doing something within an hour or two. Students Together Achieving Responsible Solutions, or STARS, is a conflict resolution program mediated by students. Our STARS the participants are really outstanding students and a very diverse group of students and just they're really great kids and being able to work with them has been really outstanding. In peer mediation there's two mediators and there's two other people who are having the issue. I mean, she's just saying like bad stuff about me and her boy. And we basically just talk the problem out with them and they come up with a solution. There are some top flight kids in peer mediation and all the way down the spectrum to kids who struggle academically because I think you need to hear their voices as well if you really want people to believe and kids to believe that, okay, I can have a peer mediation with a kid who's kind of like me. Jared Crum is a senior at Richfield High School. 
what ritual does for you, yeah. they make sure that you feel welcome. No matter who you are, what you are, what national, what race, anything, they're making sure you feel welcome and they're bringing you information to how you can become a better student. They're teaching you how to write better, take better notes, what you should be focused on, and how to achieve within when you become a ninth grader. If you need help, who can you talk to? and tutoring and stuff like that. So they're making sure that you're prepared for the next level. Well, Check and Connect basically is where we meet with the teacher from any class, any grade or anything, and they help us check with our grades and how we're doing in school, if everything's okay. And usually if like we're not or anything, we stay after, they help us with our work and everything. The beauty in Check and Connect is, again, this idea that kids believe now that they can do some things. If I can get right with school, because a lot of these kids are not are the ones that are not quite sure about how schools operate, how kids operate in schools. If we can get them right with schools, now we can step forward and say, now let's push you towards the high school and get you ready for high school, then let's get you ready to, for college as well. My job is to get them college ready. Uh, and so even if you are one of my kids who are not right with school, our job is to prepare you to get ready. And so having a face to say, boy, I can go to the art teacher and talk to them about an issue. That means a lot. So Check and Connect has been amazing in that regard. Another way to check in with students on a daily basis is by using a morning meeting to help develop a sense of community in the classroom um, setting. Anybody, show of hands, how many people in here, be honest, how many people was it hard to get up this morning and come to school? It's not just a matter of, is a kid succeeding or failing in your classroom? And if they're failing, you know, well, then we'll push them on to ALC or we'll push them on to a GED program. It's a matter of, we want them here. And so we're doing everything we can to show them that the school values them and that school is important. When we looked at our data, many of our students, sophomores, juniors, seniors, and even freshmen, are parents. If we don't open a daycare and we don't open parenting classes, then we don't have the opportunity to keep these kids involved in the process. I'm a teen parent. I had my baby when I was 18. I can tell you right now, if it wasn't for the daycare, I probably would have never came back to school at all. School districts also developed or implemented programs to improve the academic performance of students. These included mentoring programs, tutoring programs, alternative schooling, and more. Oftentimes, these programs aim to make education more relevant for students and challenge the students with rigorous instruction while providing supports to increase academic success. Fast Forward is a student success program. Uh, we work with 7th and 8th graders who are having a bit of difficulty in school. The real exciting thing about the Fast Forward model, we have 11th and 12th graders who come and work with these 7th and 8th graders and they are very much invested in seeing these 7th and 8th graders succeed. I want to give back to the students, to the 7th and 8th graders. I come in and I just try to influence them to do what I didn't do. From the minute the students step in the door at Brooklyn Center High School, they're given an orientation packet, and that includes activities that they can join, groups that we have before, after school, during lunchtime, so that they feel a part of something besides, obviously they're here for academics, but we also want to engage them socially. We have partnerships with the 21st Century, so we do a lot of after school programming. We have an all school barbecue to connect the families with the school. We do that right after the first part of September. <laughs> When we started the dropout prevention program here at Washington Middle School, uh, we started out with a core group of 50 students. We took them on one or two college visits, and that was in the first year of the program. In the second year of the program, we took 300 students to seven colleges, and that's colleges in Minnesota and also colleges in Wisconsin. That's gonna be true for most of the countries up here. Oh, nice ones. Yeah. yeah. We've established a junior high alternative learning center that delivers the core classes to a small group of students and that's been highly successful for us. The previous two school years we ran an after school program which was two hours a night, two nights a week uh, where the kids could come after school, have one hour of homework help where we worked just on homework and the second hour was an enrichment hour and grades in the classroom and what the kids were willing to do in the classroom really went up. How their friends viewed class and school in my class. They would a lot of times bring their friends to this after school program, which it, it sounds weird when you think about it, kids wanting to go to a homework help program, but a lot of them would bring their friends because they found out it was something fun to do and it really reflected positively on their classroom performance. The 
one of the things I've been most proud of is Avid. I think Avid, uh, the Advancement via Individual Determination Program that we brought here, has really elevated our academic middle kids to a level that they believe they can go to college for the first time. Avid itself, I like its message. Its message is, you are in charge of your own education. We will help you with the skills and tools you'll need to succeed and to get to college. But we need you to be curious, to come here, to ask questions, to work hard, to think. I hire tutors and uh, monitor what's going on in the classroom to make sure that we're uh, following the AVID regime and um, because that, it's, it's such a good one. Um, if you follow that, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, almost 100% of your students graduate from high school, which obviously the grant uh, is, is targeting. 80 plus percent get accepted for your colleges. So we would just make sure that we were uh, following all the research proven things that AVID required of us. With the um, AVID and the college readiness, what they're doing there, they're showing you um, how you can express yourself in your own way. I've always known that my top kids, my gifted kids, would would take it to another level. But the academic middle has always been the group that struggled, that always we kind of leave them alone and they either make it or they don't. And just to hear them, just to hear my black and brown and white kids and Asian kids who are academic middle kids talk about college, I mean, it's, it's off the chart when I drop in and see tutorials. It's amazing stuff. Some school districts use the grant process to review program outcomes and bolster existing programs that were already working well. At Washington, our extended day program is known as the WINGS program. We are the longest running after school program in St. Paul. We have about 720 kids here at Washington and we average somewhere between 320 to 350 students in our after school program. We offer anywhere from 20 to 24 classes per quarter. We offer academics, credit recovery, athletics. We offer enrichment, so we have a wide variety. School districts needed to address sustainability because of the three-year limitation of the grant monies. Sustainability has to be a consideration early in the planning stages. You can't wait until you're starting implementation to begin thinking about sustainability. You choose your initiatives and how you're going to invest project money according to what you can sustain over time. And what we did here was we made a real commitment to diminishing our dependence on, on grant funding or project funding for staffing and instead using it for the development of people. For instance, for STARS, we got all of our training materials. Everything's paid for, all of our training. And so now we're really set to do it at really minimal cost. The, the costs of AVID are really heavy for the first two years. And there's $20,000 or more in costs, so we got those costs handled through the grant and now that um, the sustainability piece is that it's pretty affordable now. It's a couple thousand dollars per building so we're really hoping even despite some of these hard economic times that we're facing that we can sustain these programs. All school districts were required to measure progress and evaluate the effectiveness of their programming. Some of the things that we have implemented we know are going to produce results. We've been able to track in terms of credits earned for a typical ninth grade, and we've been very successful in terms of the last couple of years in improving that. Kids going on to graduation has increased. Uh, so there's a lot of positive things that have happened as a result of the grant. We've dramatically cut our truancy rate down, which ultimately leads to dropping out. You know, we've got a ways to go. Uh, again, all the research show that it, it takes a good four to six years to realize the benefits of the things that we have in place. But we are already, I mean, the, the, our data shows the, the, the significant impact it has based on the number of referrals that we've had on the, the grades that our kids receive. You know, there is a remarkable change in, in the number of kids who, who do well uh, in school. Uh, it has shown in just general attitude of our, of our students and our staff and our parents. I think there's a lot more effort and evidence of kids at both Richfield High School and Richfield Middle School better knowing themselves so that they can strike out on a path toward a destination that suits them. After high school, I plan to attend a four-year college. I really would like to attend University of San Diego. 
or Pace University in New York City. After high school, I plan on attending college. Um, I'm not sure where yet. There's a couple of colleges that I've been looking into. My main goal right now is to finish high school and graduate with my class. After I graduate, um, I plan to work for the summer, and then from the summer, I'll probably during the summertime, I'll probably start applying for colleges and seeing which ones will fit my situation, like with me having a baby. And I've been accepted to three colleges, and they're Dunwoody, Florida A&M, and St. Cloud State. Florida A&M is a school that I've wanted to go to since freshman year. After high school, I'm planning on going to college. I'm, sh I'm not sure yet where, but I'm planning on going as a social worker and then cosmetics. Fall 2009, I will be attending St. Cloud State University in the pre-medical field. By engaging children in school, we help them graduate with the knowledge and skills necessary to successfully meet the challenges they will face in the years ahead. The transformation is, is just remarkable from, you know, from three years ago to now. It's, it's a completely different building and I just get the sense that students are connected here and feel comfortable here and, and that's really what we wanted to do. Don't forget to make your electronics disappear, please, thank you! To get them to graduation. That's the most rewarding thing, is at the end knowing that even though we had all these ups and downs, <laughs> that in the end when you see them succeed and see them happy, that's the most important thing.